add a shared project reference to both the iOS and the Android. And I'm going to set that up. So right now it's not actually doing anything. It's, um, you know, it's still empty. So let's go ahead and implement that. So I'm going to copy over some models and some services over. And the model is essentially the same one that we have in iOS. So we are going to delete that uh, from iOS. And the service is slightly different where we have our conditional compiles. So here you see right now in, in our context switcher, we are in iOS. Um, and it shows the iOS one because we, that conditional compile is defined in our iOS project. And this one is grayed out. So once we get the Android one working, we could show how that is, uh, you, could, you could use the context switcher to switch through. So I'm going to delete this service also from the iOS. And I'm going to build just to make sure we're still building. So, All right, so we've, we've replaced the files that we had before in our iOS application with these new files that we're going to build out in this module. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, and, and this way, we, you know, we start sharing our main code across the different platforms and take advantage of what we've already built in the past. So I'm going to set our Android project as our startup project. And I'm going to build that one. I'm just going to change the API level to 17. And set it to start a project. And then try to build that out. Here you see everything gets built. Uh, we should be able to see our context switcher now. So now we have iOS and we have uh, the Droid project. So if we click it, you notice how, uh, you know, the iOS one gets grayed out. And the slight differ uh, difference here is with iOS, uh, we are not passing in any uh, parameters. But with Android, we need to pass in a stream. And then depending on which platform we're on, we need to load that document um, either from a file on iOS or from a stream on Android. So with that, we also need to add our data file into our iOS or into our Android run. So we're going to I'm going to go into main activity. And we're, we're actually not going to pass our data file yet. What we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, uh, some of the overrides and the application lifecycle. So we're going to replace uh, this implementation with this one. And right there. So we're going to have our on create. Uh, we're going to have our on start, on restart, on resume, on pause, and on stop. So this is for the activity, all the overrides that are there. I'm going to run this on the device. I'll bring that up. And right now, everything is going to build. It's going to push it out to the device. All right, so again, we're just going to look at the events that are happening as the application starts, stops, goes to, uh, exactly in and out of, of focus for the user. Exactly, exactly. So here you see we have the, uh, the on create, on start, on resume. And then if I go into the device, I'll just hit the home button, and you'll see we get the on pause, on stop. 
and then I could restart the application here and then we get the uh, the restart start and resume if we go and kill the application you see the application stops uh, but we get no destroyed event so now with that you also have a app object that you could implement so we're going to just implement this class and this application gives you some more overrides so it could give you a application wide over um, uh, on create override so when the application gets created you could do something in here for example if you want to load some state or anything like that from a database uh, you could do that all from here so if we run this on the device so we have activity events and we have app events app, application wide events okay. yeah so here you see we get the app created we get the uh, the view created it start it's resumed and then we get the same events as we did last time so you notice the implementation of the app object is a little bit strange so you have to uh, implement application and then you have to uh, do the JNI handle ownership. So this is uh, specific to Java, and it's uh, passing an int pointer. Uh, so when, when your application gets initialized, it passes all this, so you have to implement all this and pass it into the base class. And this is how it essentially communicates into the uh, Java virtual machine. All right. So that is application structure for Android. So now we'll switch back over, and we'll look at using a, uh, a list view. Uh, so what, what the goal is here is we want to show the data in the list view. And, of course, we're going to have some data, and then we're going to have a list view, and then a table adapter within that list view. And then the table adapter is going to call some uh, AXML, uh, you know, layouts or anything like that, or you're going to build it through code to actually display something in a list view. So you have some base adapters that are available. So Android gives you a base adapter, and you have a standard array adapter and a generic array adapter. Uh, and this will could just give you a display like this, which is a single um, you know, text field or label that you could display, and you could scroll through the list. You also have cursor adapters. So cursor adapters, you have simple cursor adapters and custom cursor adapters, and this is when you want to display data from a database, uh, from a SQLite database on the device, and it's uh, highly optimized for that. So uh, it'll scroll fast. Uh, you don't, you know, if you have a million records to load, uh, you won't definitely want to use the, uh, the cursor adapter. And then you also have uh, custom adapters. So, and that's what we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at. We're not gonna be using cursor adapters, uh, but we'll look at an, an array adapter and then a custom adapter in the next demo. So I'm gonna switch back over. I'm gonna just close everything off. And then I'm gonna go into the assets and I'm just gonna copy over some items that we need. So I'm going to copy this raw folder and this layout folder, copy it into our resources. And I'm just going to say yes to overwrite. And in the layout, what we've done is, in, in the actual, in the resources, what we've done is we've done the, we've added the data.kml file and which is the same KML file we're using in the other one. And we're adding it as an Android resource right there. So that's the data that we're going to load up, and then in our main.axml, what we have in here is we have a list view, and this is the, uh, the XML view. So we have a list view uh, to show our properties, and you can see it in the document outline also. So that was pre-built. Uh, pre that's what I copied over. And we need to load some data up. So let's go in here, and we're going to change the onCreate with 
this right here. So we're going to set the content view uh, to the main uh, to the main one that that we have there. We're going to load the data, uh, and then in load data, basically it's going to do the same thing that iOS does, except we're going to be calling this right here. So let me just try to get it all in screen. So the, uh, we're going to call this dot resource dot open raw resource, and this is our data file that we want to open. So that is what we're going to pa pass into the service. It's going to pass it in as a stream. And then we're just going to find the, the list. And then we're going to create an array adapter of type heritage properties. And we're going to set the type to simple list item one and pass in our collection of property items. So now up here we have a, uh, an error. So we just need to add a using statement. And we could add a breakpoint right here. So everything will get loaded. We'll just make sure. And then we will run it. So why didn't we put that data.kml file in the shared code library? So uh, this one, we didn't put it in there because we need to load it up as a uh, resource. Uh, so right here, you see that we have one second. So the resources that open raw resource, we wouldn't have access in, into that from the shared project. Okay, so it's how so, it embeds that data into our yeah. resource as it, as it goes. Okay. Exactly. So here you see everything's loaded. Uh, we still get 136 because it's, it's the same file. And we're going to go in and we're just going to hit F5. And now you see we have all our heritage properties. Now the reason it shows the class name is because it just does a two string and the default implementation for two string is just to give it the full namespace of the class. So we could go in here and we could just add a override two string. And we'll just return this dot name. So now at this point, we should be able to see some names on our Android app. So and there are all the names that we have from the data file. So now to stay, uh, you know, say the to make the list view the same as iOS, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to show the name, we want to show the, uh, the la and the latitude and longitude. So what we've done is when I copied the resources over, there was a layout called Heritage Property List View Layout. And this is going to define our custom layout. So we just have two text boxes or three text boxes because over here we're going to also add uh, the ID of the, of the item. So then we're going to go back and we're going to copy a Heritage property adapter into our project. Now, this is a custom adapter uh, that we uh, inherit from base adapter. And it's similar to a UI table view source in iOS. Uh, you're going to have some overrides in here to, to get the, um, uh, the count, uh, to get the item ID. And the most important part is this right here is to get the view. Uh, so th this will. Uh, load the view and it will show the uh, the name, the ID, and the the format or not the format, the latitude and longitude. So I'll just run this. We have to do one more change in here and our load data. should be changed to so let me just stop that heritage property adapter So 
So I'm just going to load the data in here. And here you'll notice how we, uh, for the adapter, we're setting the our custom uh, our custom adapter, heritage property adapter, and we're setting it to the to the list view. So I can also set a breakpoint. So when it grabs the view, it'll go in there. So one thing as this compiles, one thing to point out here is you want to reuse views when you're doing uh, using list views. Uh, for example, here it's going to send in a null at first. Uh, so the first time it's going to be null, so we want to go inflate the resource that we created, which is our heritage property list view layout. So that's the layout that I showed uh, the AXML file. And then it goes in and creates it. It's going to set the data properties. And then the second time around, it's going to send in the cached view. So this is for optimization because you don't want to call this inflator all the time, uh, the, uh, the layout inflator.inflate, uh, because that will slow down your application uh, a bit. So I will run this. And there you see we have a custom layout uh, showing the name.